What's up guys, that Castle Good Miniatures back with another video tutorial and this time we're going to be taking a look at a little overview video It's going to be talking about all the oil techniques that we've been using so far in the weathering tutorial series. So most everything we're going to talk about in this video we've already covered in greater detail in previous videos. I'm going to give you some final notes and just a couple more tips and tricks and then after this we'll wrap up the oil portion of the series and we'll move on to some other techniques. So one of the most important things that we can talk about when we're discussing miniature painting with oils is the type of oil that we're going to be using. I'm going to be using Abtalung 502, and I've used Abtalung 502 in all the demonstrations that I've ever shown with oil techniques. Uh, there's a simple reason for that. Uh, this brand of paint is specifically designed for miniature painting, so it has a lot less linseed oil in it. So in most oils, one of the key ingredients is going to be this linseed oil, and that's what keeps the pigments wet. Um, so things like artist oils are designed to paint over canvas. A canvas is a very absorbent surface, so it has a lot higher content of linseed oil. So those paints stay wet for a very long time, even over a surface that's absorbing a lot of that linseed oil into it. So for miniature painting, we're painting over plastic. We're painting over a hard surface. It's not absorbent at all. So we need something that takes that into consideration. And that's what Abtalung 502 does. So it has a lot less linseed oil. They're going to be drying out a lot faster and just a much better product to use when miniature painting. All right, so let's take a look at some of the techniques we're going to be talking about in this video. Uh, first, we're going to be talking about modeling effects. And then we're going to be talking about color modulation and filtering. Color modulation and filtering are kind of the same thing. Um, there's a little bit of difference, and I'll explain that. And then we're going to be talking about blending layers. So uh, there's two types of applications for blending layers. One going to be a scrubbing or a dry brush type application. And the other one I'm just going to be calling the oil and air application. So we just thin our oils down so that we can spray them through an airbrush. Uh, so keep in mind, guys, that all these are base coloring techniques. So this is very basic stuff. Uh, very early on in the process, nothing too detailed, We're using dry applications straight from the palette, and at no point are we using any types of thinners. So let's take a look at the modeling effect. Uh, the literal definition for modeling is to mark or diversify with spots or blotches of a different color or shade. So we're just using this technique to add very slight indications of early on distressing. So very simple to do. You just go on and you add your little blotches and little splotches of different color. And we can control the opacity of those by feathering them back off with a feathering brush. So we just use like a brush that's very soft bristles. And we go back over our marks and little spots and blotches. And we just control. And you can do as many or as little as you like and blend them off as much or as little as you like as well. So one of the other things that we're going to be discussing in this video is color modulation and filtering. Um, so color modulation is... Adding a bit of complexity to your color just through the lightness scales. So we're just talking about getting lighter lights, darker darks, and we're forcing shadows, and we're forcing highlights. It's a very stylized approach. Uh, but if done correctly, it's very appealing and very eye-catching. Now, uh, when we're talking about filtering, the only difference is, is that we're using the hue spectrum instead of the lightness spectrum. So instead of getting darker yellow or a lighter yellow, we're going to be shifting that color to a, an entirely different color. So we could be talking about getting into like a green or a blue or sh filtering it towards more of an orange. So if you take a look at this green piece of armor here, you can see down at the very bottom, uh, it gets a lot darker. So we've modulated the color darker, but we've also filtered a very slight blue filter onto that. So just take a look at the amount of complexity that these two techniques, when used together, add to a model. Again, it's very stylized, but it looks very good and it's very simple to do. So one of the other techniques we're going to talk about are blending layers. So this is a technique that I picked up from watching Bob Ross paint. At the beginning of his programs, he always either showed or talked about priming his canvas with a liquid white, a very thin oil color over his entire canvas and all that did was simply make his canvas very wet and slick and it allows for very easy blending over top of that. So I've adapted this for miniature painting and what we're going to do is we're always going to base our miniatures out in an acrylic base color. So this jet has been based out in white acrylics and now all we're simply doing is coming back with a white oil and we're just scrubbing that white oil 
over all of the surfaces. Same thing on this. We base this out in the Thousand Suns Blue from Citadel, and now we're coming back in with the Blue Green from Absalom 502. And as you can see, we're working a very thin oil layer over the entire surface. So one of the most important things about this technique is you want to make sure that your blending layer that you're adding with oils closely matches the color of your acrylic base color. If you don't have a perfect match, just right out of the tube. It's very easy to mix oils to get a color that's as close as you can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to be as close as you can. The other application for a blending layer is this oil and air technique that I've been doing for quite some time. I started out doing this with enamels. And this kind of just works like a wash, basically. So we're thinning down our oils with mineral spirits enough to where we can spray them through the airbrush. And then we're just putting a couple layers of, a, of that oil color over our surface. And then we're going to come back and we're going to clean off the excess. And a lot of times we're leaving a lot of it in the recesses. So it kind of acts like a wash. And we have a thin layer of oil over our entire surface that then we can use as a blending layer. Okay, so now we're going to get into the demonstration part of the video, and we're just going to be working on these two pieces of armor here. So I have one that's been uh, based out in Thousand Suns Blue from Citadel, and then the other one, uh, we did a little bit of chipping effects on. We did make a video about that, so if you need to uh, learn about chipping, there is a video up on YouTube about it. And uh, we just based it out in the whole red, and then did a layer of chipping medium, came back over it with a green. And now we're ready to add our blending layer onto this. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show the oil and air technique. So as you can see, I just had a glob of oil there in my airbrush, and I mixed it down with some mineral spirits. Now, uh, if you're not used to doing this technique, I suggest you uh, mix your paints down in like a little container first. Well, I've done this so many times, I'm just kind of used to the exact amount you want. So when you're spraying this, what you're looking for is you're looking just for a nice, even coat. You don't want it to be running or anything like that when it comes out of the airbrush. You want it to coat just like an acrylic wood. It's going to be a little bit shiny because it's an oil color, uh, but that's perfectly natural, perfectly fine. After you get that layer of oil on there, we're then going to come back and we're going to clean a lot of that off. So we're going to be using mineral spirits and any kind of tool that we have, things like uh, cotton swabs or wool daubers or even uh, on larger models, we can just use a piece of cloth and we're going to remove uh, a lot of that oil. Now you can remove as much as you want or you can remove as little as you want. You can do it however you want. Uh, but what we're trying to get here is we're trying to get a blending layer and it just so happens that this technique also acts as a wash. So it's going to be we're going to be leaving a lot of this oil in the crevices so we have a wash effect there. Uh, but mainly you want to make sure that we have that very thin layer of oil over the entire surface and we're ready to go with the rest of our oils. So now we're going to be talking a little bit about the blue recipe here. So when we're doing when we're doing this with blues, uh, doing the dry the scrubbing method, we're going to be working off a palette. So what I've done is I've went ahead and laid out all my oil colors I'm going to be using throughout the entire process. And as I'm getting ready to do this uh, blending layer, I'm going to load up my brush pretty heavy. I'm going to get a lot of oil on that brush. Make sure all the all the bristles of the brush have, have that oil color on them. And now look, I'm just going to start working that oil off of my brush, just right on the palette. Just work it off. And once you start to be able to see that palette underneath, it starts to get a little streaky, you know that your brush is perfectly loaded at this point. All the bristles are, all the bristles are saturated, but there's, there's not too much oil. We're working real thin. So I'm, I'm going to show you here, here in just a few minutes just exactly how thin that we are working. It's, it's hard to tell over this because it's, they're the exact same color, so you can't really tell too much. But once we get our brush loaded up, we're going to go over that surface, and we're just scrubbing this oil paint in. So we want to make sure we get it all over the surface, get it in the crevices, and just really work it into that surface and just kind of feather it around back and forth, up and down. Again, working, work it into those crevices. And what this is going to do is when we come back and start working with our other oils and we start doing our modeling and color modulation and, and working on uh, darker colors or lighter colors, 
this layer of oil is going to make things blend out a lot easier. And it's the same technique with any color. So if you're using like a white, this is the palette I'm going to be using for my white right here. So you can see lots of lots of light grays and kind of dusty colors. And uh, what I've done here is I've primed and base coated the entire model out in a white color. And I'm just coming back through with this large brush. So if you're working on smaller models, just use a smaller brush. And we're just coming in with this white oil and we're just working it into the surface, making sure we're getting all the crevices best we can and just go over the entire surface to make sure it has very thin layer of oil. All right, so I mentioned how thin that we were working. And it's kind of hard to tell when we're working over solid colors. You can't really tell. And uh, I get a lot of messages from people that are concerned that maybe they're not working thin enough or their oils are taking too long to dry. Uh, but firstly, uh, again, I want to mention, make sure you're using the Absalom 502 oils. They're specifically designed for miniature painting. So you're going to dry a lot faster than artist oils. But look, look how thin I'm working here. You can see that this is completely translucent, almost 100% translucent. And we're still getting that coloration. So we're doing that color modulation here. I'm getting that more rich green down here at the bottom. Completely translucent. So make sure you're working real thin. And once we get those blending layers on, we can now start coming in and start doing some modeling, some color modulation. Start just working in different colors onto our model. So I want to get this bit to me. It's a little bit too warm. I want to get it nice and cool, dark color. So I'm going to just mix these two and you see how I kind of shovel a lot of paint off. You don't, you don't really want to work too thin. You want to get a lot of paint onto your brush. Just really make sure that every bristle completely saturated with the oils and then work it off. Just work it off on your palette. And you see that's very lightly loaded, very lightly loaded. And that little bit of oil will go a long way since we've got this blending layer here. So when I go on to work on to this, I'm just going to be working in some just very rough uh, shadow colors and I'm just going to be doing all sorts of things right here so I'm going to be pinning in some shadows and this is also going to give us a nice modeled effect but just just look at how rough I'm doing this you know I don't really care what it looks like going on and that's the that's the beauty of oils so we can do pretty much anything we want right here we don't really have any care about what this looks like and then we can easily come back and fix it you know oils are always very easy to fix uh, very forgiving medium to work with. And same thing here. So on this white, I want a more dusty kind of effect on this. So I'm just coming in with the, uh, like a dust color, a light brown from the Adsalon 502. And I'm going to be working in the crevices first. Typically just kind of work in the crevices and then kind of work out of them. You know, create that contrast. You know, get that nice modeled effect. And we're just making this look as dusty as we can here. And then what we're going to do once we get that on there, so we're going to come back with a feathering brush and we're going to feather all this together. So this is feathering technique here. This is going to soften everything. This is going to make sure that everything's nice and soft and blended together. And we're picking up a lot of that initial blending layer and it's mixing with that darker color here. And it's just mixing everything together. Make sure it's nice and blended. And look what's happening already. Just from that one little pass, we're getting so much uh, little things happening on onto the surface of our model. There's so much information starting to come forward. We're just getting all sorts of interesting looking things. Same thing on this white. We just applied the, the dust color and now we're just going to start feathering, feathering it off, blending it in with the other color that we have down as our blending layer. And one thing you can also do with this, if you want to go back and you want to do like a kind of more controlled, we can always go back with like a Q-tip and kind of pick up some of that oil, kind of clean it off. If you want to reveal some of that lower level of, of white, you know, you can always go back and and use a q-tip and kind of remove some of the excess oil and really control you have complete control of what you're doing with these oils so <clears throat> so we've done one layer here and now we're just going to do uh, an additional layer and look i'm using a different brush so i'm going to do like these little modeling little blotches little spots a different color and then i'm just going to start feathering those in you know and you can feather them off as much or as low as you want so i'm going to be doing several several layers of oil color and modulation and modeling so i'm just working on lots of little spots and model and, and then feathering them all the way back off to where you can barely see them just slight little indications of different colors so here i'm working with the turquoise lights 
just look how look how random I'm being with it. You know, it, it doesn't matter. We don't care what it looks like going on. I'm slowly refine this as we go. So this is like I was saying earlier. This is a base coloring technique. Uh, we're not concerned with detail. We're not concerned with detail at all. We'll be detailing this later. Once we get all this done, we're just trying to quickly give as much visual interest as we can to our base colors. We're just using these oils to quickly render all these different colors and little, little changes and surfaces. So here I'm going to come in and I'm going to start adding this red color. So this is kind of filtering in a little bit of that red into the shadow. You know, I don't want it all just one kind of color. I want to add in just any other color. The red's going to look good with this. You can use any colors you want. Just always plan out your palettes. You know, do, do little streaks and stuff like this. Just pull that straight down. And it doesn't matter if you're, when you're doing streaks with oils, if they're not perfectly straight, it doesn't matter. But you always want to go back and make sure that you straighten it up with that feathering brush. So we can go back in <clears throat> and we can, we can easily straighten those streaks. Streaks will always look the best when they're perfectly straight. So now I want a little bit of indication of uh, some rust stains on here. So I'm just coming in with a little bit of that light rust from Absalom 502. And I'm just going to be working this on very lightly. I don't want it to be too heavy. We're just kind of sketching out right now. Sketching out. And as I've worked this for a little while now. You can see more and more layers we get. Look at all the variation on that surface. We get lots of variation in color. And things like that. So after we've done all that modeling blending layers, color modulation, stuff like that. What you're going to do after that is you're going to seal that in. You're going to let that dry for about 24 hours, and then you can, you're can you free to go over it with a, a varnish. And then after that, then you go in and start detailing. After that, after you get all that modeling and stuff done, we're just setting up the base color for detail. We're not, while we're doing it, we're not worried about detail. We're just getting on these different colors, you know, different variations in color, temperatures, and hues. And then once we get that done, we just seal it in. And then we go back and do all our detailing. So I'm not going to be talking too much about details in this video. But as we continue through the series, we'll go back and we'll talk more about the details. So here, I'm just going to show a little bit on this green. So you can see uh, a big focus on rust on this green. I want a lot of focus on rust. So we're going to keep the green color pretty simple. Uh, in the beginning, we we put a little bit darker green down at the bottom and now I'm doing a little bit lighter green here at the, in the middle and the top and that's pretty much what I'm gonna do uh, to the green and then I'm just gonna focus on putting those rust colors on so I'm using like rust colored oils and working down in the crevices around all the little bits of detail but when we're doing these lighter green areas here you'll notice <clears throat> that they look faded like when we use oils that have a lot of white content or gray content, it tends to give our uh, color a very desaturated look. So that's a good way to take some of the richness and color out, kind of just give it a little bit of a desaturated look. So here I've just simply done a few layers of those greens and whites and uh, some of those rust. And now this is what I'm talking about. We just come in, we're done, we've let it dry for 24 hours. And now we're just going to come in and we're going to seal it up with a, var a varnish. So I'm using just an acrylic ultra matte varnish right here. I'm just using a couple layers. I'm just going to seal all this work in. And what that's going to allow us to do is work on top of this with different types of mediums. So we can go in. We can even do additional modeling, additional work with oils. We can go back and uh, do some additional enamel work. So a lot of the, a lot of the secondary layers of oils and rust... Uh, that I did on that green, that was all enamel work. And what that what the clear coat does is that allows, that, that puts a barrier on that oil. And that's going to allow us to do additional layers of oils and additional layers of detail. And so that's pretty much all we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, I think that's pretty much going to cover everything that we've talked about with oils and uh, just put a nice little finish on it. And I hope you guys will consider joining us over at thegrimdarkcompendium.com. Getting lots and lots of people, new people every day. Uh, just joining up on the website and uh, gaining access to a very large library of tutorials. And they're all focused on 
weathering techniques and kind of the grim dark aspect of painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one.